What we're going to be looking at here is treasury stock and we're going to be using the par value method here for acquiring and reissuing our treasury stock and we're going to go through an example here and we'll start with our common stock because that becomes a basis here for this uh, par value method. So we issued here common stock 1,000 shares at $30 per share that equates to $30,000 and what we have to look at here is that the common stock has a par $5 par value per share and its market price here was $30 per share here. Now on 2-1 we acquired some treasury stock here 200 shares at $26 per share that equates to $5,200 here and that's going to be a gain here because the purchase price here of $26 is less than the $30, the original sales price of the common stock that we have up here. So you can see we go back to our common stock here to determine any gains or losses here based on that common stock value here and the purchase price here for reacquiring that treasury stock or that common stock that was outstanding here. Now on 3-1 we acquired treasury stock again here 300 shares at $40 per share that equates to $12,000. This is going to be a loss here because the purchase price of $40 is greater than the $30 original sales price here in our common stock. Again we go back to that original issue price here in our common stock. Now on 4-1 we're going to reissue here treasury stock 100 shares at $46 per share that equates to $4,600 here. Now reissuing treasury stock using the par value method is the same as using the cost method. The only difference is that treasury stock the account here is credited at its par value amount for the reissued shares. So let's go and look at our example here. So we're going to be going through a, a detailed example here but we're going to try to break it down into steps here. So uh, we're, again we're going to be looking at the treasury stock, the par value method, and we're going to go through steps A through F. But before we get into uh, those steps here, let's uh, define what we're talking about with treasury stock. Now treasury stock is a contra equity account where the debit reduces our share, our debit which is actually an increase in our treasury stock reduces our shareholders equity and a credit which is actually a minus amount to our treasury stock account increases our shareholders equity and you can see that right here debit uh, uh, reduces our equity here whereas a credit increases our equity and that's what we're talking about on a contra equity account now let's do is go down here and look at this treasury stock in comparison to the common stock um, account here to ec our equity account here for common stock and what we're talking about is a contra equity account here so you see a debit plus here for our treasury stock well we're moving over to our common stock you're going to see a debit minus here and same with our credit uh, credit here credit minus in our uh, treasury stock here is a credit plus here in our common stock. So that's what we're talking about in our contra accounts when we're working with this here. Now we're going to be going through these steps here A through F here to try to break this down. But before we get into that we have to look at our common stock account because that becomes the basis here for determining our treasury stock amount. So first off let's again our common stock equity that's our basis here and we're, we'll look at what that is. So we common stock we issued 1,000 shares here at $5 par amount at $30 per share. So what's, what we're going to have that broken down here. So we have our $5 par value here in our common stock 1,000 shares. So we had a credit here to common stock of 5,000. Now the balance uh, goes into additional paid in capital here at common stock and this is the account we're going to be working with here. So okay again you can see that here a $30 yeah, issue price here, $5 par amount. The difference gives us $25 per share here that goes into additional paid in capital here for a common stock. So you can see that here. We had $25 per share, 1,000 shares. So we had 25,000 shares here in our additional paid in capital for a common stock. So this is what we're starting with here. And those are the key amounts that we have to work with. This $25 uh, per share amount that's going into our common stock here for additional paid in capital. And it's $5 par value here for the common stock itself here. Okay, so let's start with our accounts here and we're going to maybe let's just go through these steps here for acquiring it. Uh, we're going to have a cash account here and this is what we're going to either receive or pay for those stocks based on the uh, actual uh, market price here that for either rebuying these acquiring these shares or reissuing and that's based on the market price and then we move over to our treasury stock account remember that's a contra equity account that we're going to have a par amount here again that's based on the par value of the common stock that was repurchased here as treasury stock that five in this case is going to be five dollars per share here and then 
we can move down to our uh, first we'll move over, over to our additional paid in capital here remember we talked about that here that's going to be our step c here that's going to be 25 dollars per share here that we have to deal with here and then moving over here to our additional paid in capital for, for our treasury stock and that this really becomes a balancing account here between our treasury stock account our additional paid in capital to our common stock and our cash account so that's going to be our step d here and then the other thing here we're going to have a, a step f here and that's going to be for reissuing our shares here of uh, uh, treasury stock when we reissue them here so let's Let's go and let's start out here just looking at our first entries here aside from the common stock here that was issued. So let's look at the case here where we're going to acquire 200 shares here at $26 per share here. So that would equates here to $5,200 here on 2-1 here. So we credit or reduce our cash account here by $5,200. Now our treasury stock account, that would get debited here. We got 200 shares here at $5 par. So we would debit that here for $1,000 based on that par value of the common stock here. That's on 2-1 here. Now the other, uh, that's for step B here. And then if we move over to step C here, this is where this additional paid in capital gets reduced here on this acquiring this common stock. So this is where uh, this, uh, our equity account here for common stock or additional paid in capital comes into play. So we would have had 200 shares here uh, acquired here at that $25 additional paid in capital amount here. So that we would have uh, for on one two one here we would have debited or reduced our paid in capital here by five thousand dollars okay so that takes care of our additional paid in capital our treasury stock and our cash now we have to deal with our additional paid in capital to our treasury stock and that really becomes a balancing account here Again, we've talked about that before. It's a balancing account between our treasury stock, additional paid in capital or common stock, and our cash account. And that would be step D here. So looking at our entries here. So our treasury stock, we had debited that here for $1,000. Our additional paid in capital here for our common stock, remember, we would have debited that here for $5,000. And now our cash account, well, we would have credited that here for $5,200. So simply the difference here between those amounts, we're going to come up with a balancing amount here of $800 here. So what we would do in that case here to, to balance these things, we need a, uh, in this case, a credit balance here of $800 to make our balancing entry here. So not to go back over all our debits and credits, but you can do that here. And that's a gain here. Well, what do we do with gains? Well, additional paid in capital, it's a gain here. Even though we're reducing our additional paid in capital here to our treasury stock here because it's a credit as a minus amount, it's actually a gain because it's a contra equity account. So here we're sitting with that gain of $800. Just remember here, any gains here goes to additional paid in capital here. You would credit your additional paid in capital for any gains. In this case, it was $800. Okay, now let's go and let's look at our second entry here in 3-1 here. Well, we issued 300 shares here or acquired 300 shares here at $40 per share. So we would credit or reduce our cash account here for $12,000. And then moving over to our treasury stock. Again, we just use that par value here. The, we had, uh, we're going to acquire 300 shares at the $5 par value used from our common stock that we would debit our treasury stock here for $1,500. And that would uh, be a, a step B here. And then step C here, well, we acquired 300 shares here at that $25 amount. Again, here are additional paid in capital uh, for common stock. So we would debit or reduce our additional paid in capital here by $7,500. Now, going over here to our uh, additional paid in step uh, D here for additional paid in capital to our treasury stock. Remember, this becomes the balancing amount here. So I'm not going to go through all our debits and credits here. You can look at them. But treasury stock, we had $1,500 here. Well, let's look at that. That was a debit amount here, $1,500. Additional paid in capital for our common stock that we had at debit amount here at $7,500. And then our cash account here, we had a credit amount here at um, $12,000. So we reduced our cash by $12,000. So the difference here is going to give us a loss here because we paid more here than what we had in our balancing account here. So we have a loss of $3,000. So how do we handle that loss here? Well, we first we look at our additional paid in capital to our 
treasury stock here. Now, we only have $800 in that additional paid in capital account, and that's all we can reduce it by here. So what we're doing here for the loss, we would debit that here for the amount that's sitting in the account. That was the $800. So we debit our additional paid in capital here for $800. Now remember, our debits here is an increase to our additional paid in capital, but that is a loss. So we debit it for $800. Now, this is where we come up with this. The, the difference here is going to flow into the retained earnings here on our balance sheet here. So our retained earnings here gets the difference. The loss was $3,000. we have taken care of $800 here in additional paid in capital to our treasury stock. So the difference here between the $800 here and the $3,000 leaves us $2,200 here in our retained earnings. So on our retained earnings, on our balance sheet, another equity account using this par value method, we debit that or decrease our retained earnings here for $2,200. So what's going on here? For a loss, you debit uh, your a, a treasury stock additional paid in capital up account here and if there's a zero balance here and in this case there is we ended up with we used 800 up here if there's a zero balance then you debit the remainder goes into your retained earnings account here on your equity account here on your balance sheet. okay so we've taken care of the cases here both where we had a gain remember additional paid in capital treasury stock that becomes a balancing account here between the treasury stock account additional paid in capital here to our common stock and also our cash account just look at all your debits and credits make sure they all balance out and if you end up with a gain here the, that is you had uh, more balance here in your in this case in your treasury stock and your additional paid in capital here was greater than the cash that was paid Therefore, you have a gain. Gains get credited, which is a reduction here to additional paid in capital and treasury stock because it's a contra account. Companies can own their own stock here, so they set up this treasury stock and additional paid in capital as a contra account. So that's really the reason here why we've got that contra account. And then remember here, when you had a loss in the case here where your cash outlays were greater than both the um, treasury stock that you debited here and the addi uh, additional paid in capital to your common stock that was uh, deb uh, debited here to cash account here credit was greater so there you came up with a loss and you can only your loss goes into your additional paid in capital to your treasury a uh, treasury stock here as a debit amount it's actually a debit plus here but that represents a loss and then any balance between for that loss flows right into your retained earnings here now we're going to look at reissuing this treasury stock but just remember here when you're dealing with this uh, par value method everything works off the uh, common stock that was issued its par value becomes what you use here for your treasury stock par value here when you're issuing or uh, acquiring and reissuing it and then the additional paid in capital here uh, on your common stock common stock the number of shares doesn't change in your common stock power amount doesn't change but the additional paid in capital your common stock does change it gets decreased here when you acquire this treasury stock here again by the by the amount here the difference between the power value and the sale price that you received here on your common stock now let's look talk about this reissuing one point here so reissuing it we issued reissued here 100 shares of treasury stock at 46 dollars per share here so we would have that amount we would have debited our cash account here for 4600 dollars and then the other other amount here gone into our treasuries uh what was it here our treasury stock got forty six hundred dollars our cash excuse me got debited here for forty six hundred so the treasury stock here reissuing it that's actually step f that we're talking about here for both our cash and our reissuing here that was a hundred shares at the five dollar par value again we use that par value here on four on four one here we um, reissued those shares so, so we would credit or reduce our treasury stock because we reissued it here by five hundred dollars a hundred shares here at five dollar par value and then the balance goes into additional paid in capital here for treasury stock here we would accredit that here reduce our additional paid in capital by really the difference here between the cash we received the forty six hundred less the 
treasury stock par value that was assigned to 500 so the balance goes into uh, our additional paid in capital or reduction to additional paid in capital here of $4,100. Okay, so that takes care of both uh, acquiring and reissuing our treasury stock. Just remember you have to deal with the uh, common stocks par value here and the additional paid in capital or common stock gets reduced here for that treasury stock here when you're buying, buying, uh, buying, or acquiring your treasury stock. And then just remember one last thing here. Uh, point F that we were talking about or that step F here. Reissuing treasury stock using the par value method is the same as using the cost method. Okay, so we've taken care of that here. Now let's just go and do a resummarize what we've done here. So these are the rules that we would follow under this par value method here. And these, okay, so we got the par value method summarized and these are the rules we fo uh, follow here. So for step one, in all strands, stock transactions, no gains or losses are shown on the income statement. All it takes, all that's taking place here is in the equity accounts on our balance sheet and then the cash transactions that's involved. Nothing goes to the income statement here. Point two here, treasury stock, the treasury stock account is based on the par value of the shares of the common stock that was issued here and then the common stock that would be uh, repurchased back here as treasury stock. So that's based on the par value of those common stock. Point three here, gains credited to the treasury stock additional paid in capital. Those uh, You would credit any gains here to that uh, treasury stock additional paid in capital. That's where the purchase price here is less than the original sales price here, that common stock that we're talking about. And then point four here, you have losses are debited to the treasury stock additional paid in capital. And if there is any balance in it, then the debit goes to the debit, you debit returned earnings for the balancing amount that we looked at in this example. That's where the purchase price here is greater than the original sales price of the common stock. And that is why the retained earnings cannot increase by the shares of the transactions. And just finally here, remember that our treasury stock account here and the treasury stock additional paid in capital are contra equity accounts. Okay, so that takes care of this par value method here, but just remember here when you're working with this par value method, go back and look at the steps that we went through here. For, and uh, Just go back and look at those steps here, and then just remember these rules here that are followed here. So that we went through um, it, it's got some difficult concepts in here because it's a contra equity account here and you're also dealing with that common stock account here for its par value here and then the additional paid in capital for the par value. Okay, so that takes care of our treasury stock using this par value method for acquiring it here and reissuing the treasury stock.